Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I posted a video. So a new request came my way and some users on our Discord channel want to know how they can use lookup record um, against a database lookup service. So we have this simple lookup record that is hooked up to a database record lookup service. And basically what we want to do, let's say you have an incoming flow that has, let's say, a JSON payload. And in our case, we have a make and let's simulate in our case, we have a car database in the back end. So every time the make comes, I want to see what's the values or what's my inventory. I have a database that I created here or a table where I have this particular demo cars catalog. And if I run a query, you can see I have two makes, Volkswagen or VW or in Kia and then uh, it has associated with it a car value. So what we're going to do in this example, we're going to use NiFi to uh, lookup service hooked up to a database record lookup service to actually get an outcome of it. So let's just run it and then I'll walk you guys through exact steps to build it and go through the parameters. So let's run it once. And we can see that this generates uh, basically that empty JSON that I have in my generate text. I'm going to throw this JSON at my lookup record, run it. And this should return me a match, an unmatch or a failure. So in this case, obviously, since we do have a key and make here should return me a value of 25,000. To look at the flow. Yep, we can see that the make Kia return this data, which is the full extent of the row in the database. And we can play with these values. We can have it return only one column, multiple columns, all columns, and even we can change this placeholders here. So now let's go ahead and go to the steps of creating it. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag this to the side and we're just going to replicate it and build it. First, we're going to get a generate flow file, right? It'll probably copy and paste because there's not a lot of engineering here uh, and we're going to instantiate it with this particular json and in your case it's going to be something else but keep in mind you have to have this clear keys here keys and value or it can be something else if you have a csv value or if you have a single value it's up to you you can then use different parsers to read that and put it into a key that your lookup record can consume next we're going to drag on the canvas a lookup record All right, and this is where things get funny. We're gonna associate it on success and let's go and explore this lookup record. First, you have to give it a record reader uh, since this processor is a type record and a record writer. Basically what it says, how am I gonna read the data? So in our case, it's gonna be a JSON. So I'm gonna use an existing JSON tree reader or as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and create it since we're here. So create a new one. So let me just go ahead and do that again. Uh, here from the drop down go to the bottom create new service and then from the drop down you select what type of service so we're going to choose a json tree reader and we're going to give it a name so we're going to say json look and we're going to instantiate all our services with this dash look create and let's navigate to it so we can configure it there's not much to configure but i want you guys to go through it so here we're going to infer the schema he's very good at it and we're going to leave everything the same. Apply. And now we're going to um, enable the controller. All right. Close. Exit this window. Go back to the lookup record properties. And now let's create a record writer. How do I want to expose this data? So I'm happy to spit it back as a, as a JSON. So what I'll do in this case, I'm going to go create a new service. Look for a JSON, right? JSON record set writer. Click on it add our look so we can easily identify them in the list and the same thing go there um, the properties will be the same he's going to inherit the schema from the incoming record uh, reader and we're just going to leave the same if you have some more specification for example here pre json or not you can play with this uh, values here i'm not we're not going to do that we're just going to leave it vanilla enable Okay, close. We're going to go to the next property. Now 
we have to engage a lookup service and a lookup service in our case will be a database lookup service so i already have one but what i'll do for this purpose i'm going to create a new one so same principle drop down lookup service and let's give it that funky name and this one is not going to be default we're going to give it some value all right so right now it's an invalid state you can see this is missing a bunch of properties so let's go and configure it here i already have a mysql database connector um, if you haven't seen how that's done we're not going to go through it right now you're just going to have to watch one of my other tutorials so if you go to the main playlist just scroll through it you're going to see how you can set up multiple database connections so i already have this one i'm going to connect i'm going to paste in the full path to my table i'm going to use as my lookup and in my lookup key basically this is going to be what is the column i am going to use as a filter right so you remember in that json file we had the make in our case so we're just going to say make and press ok here at the lookup value columns this is basically imagine that i have these two columns make and car value if I leave it empty, he will return all of the columns. If I give it car value, let's say here, let's start with this example. He will return me just the value of this column into return. Great. Now, let's say OK. Apply. And let's enable this controller. Close. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to attach a dummy processor here. So we can have some outputs let's go back into this lookup processor and play with some um, properties next what i'll do uh, we're going to get to the result record path soon and but actually let's do it right now so this will be when you say when you think about result record path uh, we can use this one to actually create the outcome of our query so let's call it um uh, res res result set or let's put it like this result set so it's going to be meaningful right and let's give it a path because think about it this is going to be what is the record path basically the processor says where do you want me to write this when i'm going to reply to you and i'm going to say okay you can put it into this location right and now the router strategy I don't want it to just route it to success. I want it to use the match or unmatch routing strategy. Because in case I don't have a match, then I'm going to do something else in my logic. All right. So for now, let's stick there. Let's apply and let's drag here first. We're going to drag the matched. Let's drag the unmatched as well. And let's drag the failure as well. Now let's jump back into our look, into our. Uh, uh, look up record and play with the other properties now there is one property here that you don't see and this is i would say it's pretty bad from the explanation i mean you have to read the entire doco how do i read the entire doco of a processor straight from here click right and view usage here they mention a user property somewhere here so it's a user defined property the lookup service will use the user defined property but in some cases in in this case the user defined property has a specific value name that you have to provide so and i'm we're going we're to show you guys so let's jump, jump back in and first um add that particular property so we're going to say key and now what is the key that is going to be passed it's going to this database record lookup service so think about this uh, if you go back here and you look at the lookup service basically we get a, a, a let's let, let's actually go back here this is what we're going to provide to the service and it's going to pass through a json writer a reader he's going to basically pick up the value from this json path which is going to be the JSON path expression is going to be something like this. And he's going to capture this value. This value is going to be passed as a key to the look database lookup service. So let me rephrase that. We're going to add the key and that's the key. 
and then we can say make basically whatever value comes in this key coming from this json tree reader is going to be forwarded to the database record lookup service i hope it makes sense but let's go again and do this and once we have this one the database lookup service so if we navigate to this sucker the database lookup service will actually match it against the lookup key column make. So basically what we're saying, this is going to be your predicate column and whatever value comes in the key is going to be the value you're going to look for. So if you guys understand SQL, this is going to make sense. Now, let's run this one once and let's see what's the outcome. All right, so we have a match. Wow, that's good. And now let's evaluate the result. And pretty much this is what we want. We want the make. Basically, this is the make that we told him to look for. And the outcome of it is this. Results it, you remember? So let me just go here on the side. Let me try to put this into multiple screens. So it's going to be visible by you guys. Oops, sorry. Let me close this one. Open this property. Mm. Not sure if I can drag it to the side. All right. So if I put it side by side, it's easy to see here. We have the make. This is what we got from an incoming flow file. And what we're telling him here, use the property and insert entire record. And insert the entire record will be attached to this record path. It's going to be a result set. And then inside the result set, we're going to have the values right so this is the using this configuration that you guys see here this is the outcome so if you want to play with the configuration and say i want to have a different outcome all right cool so what are you going to do here you're going to play with the insert entire record or actually let's stop the process before we make changes or insert record fields basically what this says i want you to insert the incoming record fields in and attach it to the payload that the JSON tree reader comes because that's why it's a lookup in an enriched processor. So if we use this property and we save it, we run it once, um, and look at it, this is going to be a different outcome. So if you see, it's a different size outcome. And look at it. Right now, it returns us a map record. To be honest, I'm not really, I'm not really happy with this map record. The reason being it's it's really hard to parse so my preferred approach will be this one where i got a key and i inside this key i get a value but wouldn't be ideal if i only get make here and car value right that, that will be the idea i just want to clean json file into a list so let's go ahead and see how that can be done so you see you get multiple outcomes out of this in this honestly this map record list it actually sucks i don't know why you return that it's it's fine so it's really hard to consume that's what i'm saying so let's say we want to return the exact record as it is but in a list you know it might be a situation where your predicate will return multiple rows so what we want to do here we want to add here the forward slash and here we want to tell it insert record fields and leave everything the same and keep in mind here as a controller we told him that we don't have an exact list of columns that we want to look for so just bring us everything let's go ahead and clear this queue here before run one to start and now let's look at the outcome and voila this is a very usable and parsable um result in our case so basically you can go and play with it without having to do extra parsing you can basically just use another record reader through json or you can even use a split json so like i has all of this resource okay cool so what i'll do next i'll probably wrap up this tutorial create a template for this one and share it with you guys feel free to visit our for those guys who are new to the channel hmm. Let me see here. Sign in. Yep, that's me. Um, you can visit our NiFi repository. It's full of goodies. There's a lot of people who like it. 
So that's good. A bunch of everything that I you find in the tutorials, you'll find them here as templates. So you can just copy and paste, reuse the reuse them, and if you can start it, good. If you can add some comments, uh, that's also great. And for those who want to learn more about NiFi, feel free to join our the Inside by Discord channel. So we have about what is it, 19 plus 9.5, around 160 members plus, and we're constantly exchanging here uh, information. All right, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and don't feel free to drop me comments. I'll try to answer as much as possible since it's not as present as I should be, but uh, hey, you know, kids can be busy. All right, you guys take care and I'll see you in the next tutorial.